Morning, everybody. G'day, g'day. Oh, on the show today, we tell Will Anderson who Kate Walsh is. <laughs> but I <laughs> cannot believe interview. that he lives in a world that he doesn't know who Kate Walsh is. Know, but he lives well, he in an now. ABC world, and that's not quite Grey's mm. Anatomy like. Mm. You know, unbelievable. Sure, I see what stuff. you're saying. Yeah, yeah um, Amy Shark in education about country town. <laughs> yeah, we talk about rats and the size of them. And yeah. things that have been pulled out of you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and the most important thing of the morning, we talk about how we are being treated in this very it's studio from people we work with. It's a great point. Mm. This is Nathan, Matt and Sean. So we are um, really great people to work with. I mean, famously. Everyone says so. Oh, Sean, Everyone. I can't meet a person that doesn't say that exact thing. Mm. Um, Abby is uh, doing her first shift with us this morning. She's learning the ropes. Good morning, Abby. Good morning. <laughs> now, Abby, you were informed about working with us yesterday by our boss, David McClung. Do you want to let everyone know what happened and your reaction? I shed a bit of a tear, <laughs> honestly. Um, I got told by a big boss. Yeah. And I cried. It was just a whole whirlwind with, with of excitement or because with excitement, you felt your world Abby. crashing in uh, around you. I was a bit you. nervy. Yeah. Right. A bit nervy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mainly yeah. excitement. Yeah. Mainly yeah. excitement. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Crying with excitement, Abby. That that's is the one. that is refreshing. So is this a <laughs> is this a big deal? Is it major deal? Um, what did your mum say? Bring in pastries. <laughs> <laughs> I like your mum's attitude. <laughs> <laughs> What's your mum's uh, name, Abby? Emma. 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 We love you, Emma. Already. Mama Cullen. Mama Cullen. Mama Cullen. That's the one. And you know what? It's just a Breath of fresh air, really. Um, mm. I'd now like to what, enthusiasm? introduce to the show um, the people that have been working with us for a while, mm. um, Harry, Ellie and the Bin Chicken Tim. Mm. Morning. Mm. The reason why we'd like to get Abby on is just a reminder to you guys about the wonderful <laughs> opportunity that you have every morning to, to work, work with, with us. us. Because I feel like generally <laughs> lately I just am <laughs> not <laughs> feeling the Abby excitement I do and think- importance. <laughs> To be fair, Nathan, About I do role. think Ellie sheds a tear every day. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not exciting. What are you Harry. thinking? I wake up every morning and just sing this one. I'm so excited. Every single morning. <laughs> <laughs> you whistle it. Yes. Yes. I don't know, Sean. I'm, I'm, general, I'm just it's pinching general. myself no, every day. I, I, like I like to I say, Harry, Harry. Harry is probably the most up and about about the situation. The next in line that is probably, you know, <laughs> that, that still sees a little bit of humour in it is Tim. Yes. Come over here, Tim. Tim. So, Tim, you are starting to slip, though, in the general yes, excited, excitedness of working with us. I uh, mostly blame Ellie, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's been about, yeah. you've been with us about 16 yeah. months, and yeah. Yeah. certainly yeah. we remember your job interview that we took part in. So, you were in the car <laughs> during were... FaceTime, and you were, like, so excited. Yeah. Very excited. Yeah. And nervous. And nervous. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Because you're meeting why, radio legends, you said. Uh, icons. Why has that, <laughs> why has that faded? <laughs> What do you want from me? Do you want pastries? I can, I can bring in some pastries. <laughs> well, Emma said, Look, yeah, gonna Emma's going to do it for us. <laughs> and yeah. his mum. So then let's just bring in the anchor, which is the uh, person that's pulling down everyone's general <laughs> positive attitudes towards the opportunity to work with three people that to be are fair, wonderful. It's been what, eight years? Is yeah. it eight years? Hello, Ellie. It's, hi. Hi. It's, uh, seven of seven, the, yeah. the worst years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, from the moment though you walked in, how long did the excitement last yes. for? Just so I, I reckon can... it took like um, maybe six months to really get beaten down. <laughs> <laughs> did you? You guys when, laugh. I'm being so when, you, <laughs> when you got the job, when you got the yeah. call to say you've got the job, did you shed a tear of excitement? Well, I didn't. I actually didn't want the job because I, <laughs> I was living in Sydney at the time, and yeah. I wish I listened to myself. Um, <laughs> And then they flew me out here from Sydney to interview with you guys. Yeah. And, we, and we did that um, test. And I was like, oh, they're actually all right. Um, oh, so then, we yeah, started it that, all right. Yeah. Yes. You, yeah. You, you came across really nice. Yes. And then, because um, that's how we are. And then yes. everything changed. And then what happened? <laughs> and then everything changed when I got here. And then it's like, you know, it's, then we pulled off these masks. And we, were, <laughs> we were lizard people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so God. anyway, I just want you guys to just bask in what Abby is serving at yes, the moment. She's radiating. Just enthusiasm. as a reminder of of like where you are of, and of how you should be treating us. <laughs> how lucky you are. Oh, I give a, I give you a month. Abby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're generous. I gave her three days. <laughs> it took two to crack Ruby. That's right. <laughs> it's good to have you on board, Abby. 
Ever felt like a holiday after your holiday? Plan your getaway now and make up for missed holidays with whatif.com. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable so you can book with confidence. Booking cancellation windows apply. What if it's Aussie for travel? I've always been very picky about what goes in me. That is true. I remember that time we had that conversation. I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> yeah, and is. chivette fish paste. Uh, <laughs> no, it's delicious. Uh, Keenan, this chick from the US, she was in bed and um, she felt something in her ear. She's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. God. This is going to take forever to tell this story. <laughs> <laughs> this is a story about Sean's girl, ex-girlfriend. <laughs> so, um, anyway, she went um, straight to um, uh, the doctors because mm. she was like, oh, my God, I think this is what I think it is. And it was a cockroach. Oh. Had crawled into her ear. Into her into ear. ear. Into the canal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she said she could feel something in there, so she tried to blow her nose to pop it out. And that did oh, not yeah. work. Um, and then when she goes into um, the doctors, the doctors were, well, there was some reactions. Who? <laughs> I feel it, but like I don't see. I really wish I couldn't hear this. Oh, oh my yes. God. Oh, yeah. Get out of here. It's out. It's yeah. out. They got yeah, it out. out. The, doctors, big cockroach. Yeah. the doctors said that roaches cannot walk backwards. No. Um, you learn <laughs> something new every day. That's yeah, true. Um, so she reckons like he just would have kept downstairs. going and going until he made it into her brain. Cows can all well, there's a barrier. She said it. She hurt. It had hurt so much. It was in her ear from thirty to forty-five minutes. Oh, that's not too bad. Thirty oh. to forty-five minutes. I mean, I, I, you hear of people that have things in their ears for a couple of days. Like, know, imagine but, how mad it would drive you. Oh, I'd be going off me chops. That's in your ear canal. Yeah. You can hear a cockroach. And then it's yeah, trying, and to, get it. Yeah, and trying to get in there deeper and deeper. That's a bit of a, a panic station, isn't it? It's like. <laughs> If there's something just stuck in your ear and you know it's not going anywhere, that's one thing. This mm. thing had a this thing had Burrowing. a GPS I'm going, <laughs> I'm going that way. That is, <laughs> I'm going his in. His little pickaxe and his <laughs> yeah. torch on his helmet. Oh, yeah, that is. Oh, yeah. I hate that. That's disgusting. Um, we would like to um, open it up uh, and find out what's the worst thing that you've had pulled out of you. <laughs> well, not even worst thing. What have you had pulled out of mm. you? Most interesting thing, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Most interesting. Like you see things. those, you see those videos where they like it's a close up of someone's hand, and then they kind of squeeze it, and a massive splinter, like you know, an inch and yeah. a half long, just yeah. bursts out. Yeah. What about those worms that go yeah. in you? Yeah, a lot of the time they something has out, to. Have... They get them out, dangle meat outside your butt crack, <laughs> and they come out. That's a true story. I do love a wagyu. <laughs> That, you know what? If you've gone through that, how will you ever recover? And because you know why? I hope someone because is, is, is it you with, the, is it is you with yeah. a, a stick and a sausage dangling off it, <laughs> just trying to do it by yourself, or, or do you have someone there? Or who would you trust to not tell anyone? Because you'd need someone. You wouldn't trust on. anyone. You'd yeah. have to like put a wristle on the table and just bend forward. You? <laughs> <laughs> like you couldn't involve Maybe anyone. That's one way. That's one way. Um, <laughs> Why so, is Nathan squatting over some sausages <laughs> yeah, yeah. again? You're listening to Nathan, Nat and Sean. We heard the harrowing tale of the young lady who a uh, cockroach crawled into her ear. Yeah. And, she was, and they, oh. they can't turn around and they can't go backwards, so it had to be dragged Ooh, yeah. out by the doctor. It's out. It's out. Oh. Oh. I had one crawl into my mouth once, um, uh, but I was able to spit that out myself. Mm. Um, so she had to actually get someone to pull the cockroach out of her ear because it was going in. Interesting fact, everyone, cockroaches cannot walk backwards. Marie's in Wembley. Good morning, Marie. Oh, good morning. Hi, good crew. Morning, Hi, Marie. Marie. Um, okay, we're talking about things that have been pulled out of you. What have you got? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't me. It was my husband. Yeah. He was born in Africa and mm. um, he has often told us the story of having a spider in his knee and they had to get that out. In his, so, in his knee. That, in his knee. His, in his knee, a spider, yes. And apparently they just burrow in you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, my mother-in-law would often tell me how, I think there was a sea fly or something like that, and they had to iron absolutely everything, including underwear and linen and everything. Otherwise, this fly would get into you as well. But, yeah, the spider was in his knee, so they had to get that out. So what do they do? Squeeze it like a pimple and a spider <laughs> pops out? or uh, what? No, I think he went to the doctor and they yeah. had to Cut know, it out. get it out. Well, because if, yeah. if it goes yeah. to, it gets down to your feet, they become webbed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare ring that bell. <laughs> Don't you dare. No. Woo! No. No. Woo! Oh, Marie, I'm it's sorry for what nine. just happened. It's <laughs> <made it. laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not doing it in our shift. It's in Ross's. It's fine. <laughs> That's okay, then. <laughs> Mel's in Hammy Hill. Morning, Mel. Hi. How you going? Oh, hey, Mel. I've got things being pulled out of you. What have you got for us? Yeah, it turns out it's a bit hereditary in my family, every second generation. Okay. Uh, one of my kids, as a nearly four-year-old, um, has said to me one day, I'm sick of having this frozen pee up my nose. And I said, what, what? Looked up her nose, and sure enough, it was not frozen anymore. Tried to get it out. She wouldn't be in it. So up to the hospital we go. Yeah. Out comes the frozen pee that looks like a dehydrated pee now. How long so, have it been there? I don't know, and don't don't judge my parenting on this. <laughs> then my then my my next um, child about six months later tells me that she doesn't like having a plastic bead up her nose anymore. Oh. So back to the hospital I go because I know the routine by now, and I hear a familiar voice in the cubicle next door to me while I'm at emergency. Yeah. Look around the corner, and there is my second cousin with her daughter who has torn up an entire tissue and poked the whole thing up her nose. <laughs> what is it's it's with clear. your family? And then no Well, I'm going to tell you that. Um, so I'm, I just look at her blankly. She looks at me blankly, and we're like, what the hell's going on with these kids? I ring my mum, and I'm telling her, guess who I saw at the hospital? And she said, oh, yeah, it's hereditary. It's your father's fault because it's his side of the family, of course. Yeah. Um, and so when they first got married, they were living in Lake Grace, and dad's uncle's kids, of which there was like five, one of them would be at the hospital every weekend with something up something their nose. Something up their nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. it's and just it's been inbuilt. inbuilt. It's just like like genetic muscle memory for your yeah. entire family but line but to shove something up their nose. Not our entire family line. I did not do this. My generation didn't do this. Every oh, second so it skips generation. Gen- oh, right. It skips a generation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did no, you was... where did you stick things, Mel? There's an entire generation that found it very hard to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, Dad, and Sean. Some of the news at the West Coast Eagles uh, isn't getting any better, and I'm thinking about Elliot Yo. And Yo, he's been a great player for the West Coast Eagles over the uh, well since his journey began um, there about seven years ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, came back from Brisbane, didn't he? Yeah, he came mm. back from Brisbane. He was he's a mad Freo supporter, but he went to Brisbane, and then Freo couldn't fit him in, or didn't decide to get hold of him when they mm. had a chance to trade for him. And he turns out to be an absolute star. Yeah, in he's been Australia. a great player. Anyway, he's had um, osteitis, which has stuffed him up for the last couple of seasons. Um, he came back into the team, rolled his ankle straight away, mm. cost him big time. And just in the last couple of days, we've heard the news that he's got COVID. So yeah. once again, just another kick <sighs> bam, in, bam, the, in the ghoulies. Bam. Yeah, they just the punches keep on coming, don't they? <laughs> Liam Duggan um, fronted the media yesterday and he, and he, and he feels for Yoey. He has had a pretty average run, yeah. It's been a tough couple of years for Yoey, really, with, with his groins and stuff like that. So the, the challenges, they, they do keep coming, um, especially for some players individually. So feel for him, but um, just something that, that we've all had to deal with across this year and, and we'll probably continue to deal with. Whenever you're getting a bad run of things, people say, oh, they're coming threes. But what yes. about when they start coming in fours and fives and sixes? It's like, are you serious? It's supposed to be three. 37s. <laughs> yeah. 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 What do you do there? Do you just pack up and go, just, yeah, I'm done for yes. the time being? Oh. I don't just know. put your boots, you know, in 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 any form. Do you just put your um, stuff away and just go right? I'm just going to sit here, not move off the couch. I'm not going to well, get injured. He's in ISO. Get sick. He has to. Uh, okay. Maybe <laughs> yeah. come back and he doesn't have a choice. Will change. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, he'll, Fingers crossed. I mean, it's he'll, he'll trip. Unlikely. He'll trip over and go through a coffee table. Yeah. Like exactly. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll, we'll wait on that story he's at the end of the week. The moment, Let's yo. hope that's yeah. not the case. Good luck to him. Uh, moving over to the cricket, which I uh, said I was going to talk about the IPL in India is worth millions and yes, billions of billions, dollars. Yeah. The hair removal um, laser yes. yeah, surgery. Yeah. So what they're saying at the moment is the TV rights contract is up for grabs and they're suggesting it could go for $7 billion. Wow. $7 so billion. Everybody dollars. in the planet just has to put a dollar in? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so with that... That's it how means- GoFundMe works. <laughs> <laughs> It means that the players who are currently playing and getting paid, which Mitch Marsh is about a million dollars a yes. season mm-hmm. for yes. six weeks. It's not bad. Yes, it's good could, money. They're saying it could double or triple the amount of money that you're playing in that Indian Premier League for the six to eight weeks. That is astronomical. Imagine getting $3 million for six weeks' work. Jeez. Okay, so then um, say if there's a chance to play for your country, and then there's a chance to this play for it, IPL at it. the same time. And no brainer. I'm sorry. 
goodbye Australia. Yeah. yeah. So so they're concerned that this is going to stuff up the Australian Test yes, team and the One Day team and all the rest of it. So they're hoping that um, someone's put forward a suggestion that they play, uh, sorry, pay the players to have an enforced holiday so that they're available to play for Australia instead of going to the IPL. No, it won't work. But also... What? So, because they can make such easy money for six weeks. Why don't they just reschedule the, the touring schedule to exempt that six weeks? Just have a window. Yeah, I, because but what, what if the um, so the $7 billion are going, okay, this is growing great, great guns. Let's have more games. Yeah, the year. yeah, yeah. Yep. And then suddenly. That just takes over. Cricket and season playing. is IPL season. Yep. Goodbye to. That's what the concern is at yeah. the moment. The, the IPL is getting so big. And as Nathan said, it could. They it could, could decide expand. to extend it. That it stuffs up the rest of. Um, the uh, the calendar throughout. Okay, that time. you as a former professional athlete, mm. would you rather play for your country? Or would you rather three million dollars for six weeks work? Uh, once and- I've played a number of games for my country, I'm like, catch you later. Yeah. I'm going to the short form of the game. I'm playing in are. India for the couple of million dollars for six weeks. I'm going to Zimbabwe. I'm going to where, yeah. Uh, I mean, because uh, think uh, about uh, it, where else? Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah. The shelf life of a normal sports star take David Mundy out of the situation, yes. um, <laughs> uh, is, is quite short. So yeah. squirrel away as much as you can yes. for when you're yep. stretching and because and, you... and, you've got a <laughs> pain in your bum 24 hours <laughs> yeah. a day. Hey, Sean. A never-ending Pilates <laughs> bill. <laughs> <laughs> if you're only playing six months, a, uh, six weeks a year for your $3 million, your body's going to recover pretty well. I would have thought so. Imagine all that time just trying to stretch and I'd be stretching up the wazoo, mate. Yeah. Sometimes do you wish you were better at cricket than... Or at a sport oh, that's okay, played so yeah. internationally. Yeah, yeah. International sport. Yeah. So back then, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. so we know that you got paid, was it $170 a week? <laughs> I think my first contract was $17,500. Okay. But I was loaded then. I was like, what, yeah. Yeah. Rain? yeah. So was there crazy money? Well, it was money? 1924. So, so, cr- <laughs> so, so cricket was big money back then, though, compared Play, playing to... Playing for Australia, they, yeah. they always got a, a reasonable amount, yes. Yeah. yeah. God. Mm. Were you not good at cricket? No, it was pretty good, yeah. Oh, Did you choose the wrong sport, do you think? I didn't wow. play at state level for uh, cricket. How yeah, interesting, okay. how, how interesting that then. Sean punted on the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. This is full on what happened in a Parramatta shopping centre. Oh, yes. <laughs> there was security footage of the place and it was closed at night. It was mm. the food, food hall court, area. Yeah. And um, we're like, wait there. What's that running across the floor? Oh, that must be a cat. No, no. It was a rat. This it rat. Was a big ass rat. Is gigantic. Imagine him having his way in that shopping centre, just filling up night yeah. after night. Like, it is, it is court, like, yeah. it, it is like, a, it, it's a cat. Yeah. Well, yeah, yes. it's a cat. So, yeah. One of the commenters said it looks like a mongoose. Yes, it looks like a mongoose. Yeah, so yes, it's that, it's that yes. size, like yeah. a big body on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is full on. When I was over in Sydney, um, our family, when we went out for dinner, of course it was at a food court. Yeah. Because um, you're super cause, fancy cause that way. Our family well, spread across Australia is that classy. I know, but an international food <laughs> court, yes, Nathan. Yes, and it was actually a little bit classier than that. It was the food court area, but it was a restaurant just off the you know those restaurants sort of just off the side of mm, the yeah. food court, mm. so it was a bit top shelf for us. And um, we just finished eating breakfast, and then we saw a giant rat just run across the counter, and um, which was shocking to me. Uh, but then my cousin Tracy, who works in that shopping centre, said, "No, this is." There are rats everywhere in all the shopping centres in Sydney. Are you she kidding? said they're huge. And even this person online said they used to work in the centre sometimes past midnight. There are often packs of rats. <laughs> Some were the size of small cats or dogs. Their screeching was terrifying at night to hear. That is, well, that is terrifying. I didn't know that was the case. Yeah. Rats in shopping centres. Yeah, I didn't really have much experience with rats in Kalgoorlie when I was growing up because the ground vibrates so much from the mine blast yeah, all right. the time and the trucks and stuff that we only really ever had mice. So when I came to Perth and I went to go into my car one day and there was a dead rat in front of it. Yeah. I, I pooed my pants. Yeah, I, yeah, I've that never, was a never sign. seen it. Oh, you know, I've lived in you and around Fremantle for many years and, and they're, they are everywhere. And at my house, like, because I'm not that far from the river, I can't see it. It's yeah. not that fancy, but I'm not that far. And apparently that means you're more likely. And the older suburbs, you know, a lot well, of water limestone rats. and stuff. Yeah, they right. made a TV show of it. <laughs> rats everywhere. Like I one time planted um, a herb garden. So I had all these different, about eight different sorts uh. of herbs. Over two nights, 
gone. Rats ate it all. Literally just chewed it down to a tiny little stalks. You don't I know just... that they picked them and then, you know, because we've seen ratatouille. Well, they, they, they picked them from the very base of the stalk, if that's the case. Can, yeah. Can I just say, the cat that ate that rat, delicious. Yes, I know. <laughs> well, that, that's, like, oh, this one's seasoned. That's what I did. Two cats and now I don't have a problem with uh, rats anymore, except the problem is that every now and then one of the cats will murder a rat and leave it in my hallway. Oh, as that's a gift nice. to you, as Natalie. As a gift and how to big me are these? laid out. How big are these rats that are rolling around oh, your joint? No, we're near that big. Yeah, so no, I mean, that's so we're talking like body about that big. And as you can see from Rat everybody cat. listening. Rat Cat, this is the song, the, the, the band. Yeah, yeah. What wow. they used to sing? Oh, they had one oh, song. They had a couple. Oh, they, they had more than a couple. Rat, no, no, they had one big banger. Oh, one. Rat Cat. Very oh, the sun, rat cat. Da, na, na. No, that's not them. That's L7. Pretend that we're Harry's going to get us a Rat Cat. Rat cat. Oh, well, while Harry finds this rat cat, don't um, go now. I think don't go now. Don't, don't go, go now. don't go now. Don't go now. Don't go now. Here we go. Here we go. Oh wait, there oh, we go. Vote one vote Kate Cheney Kate apparently. Cheney. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody political ads at the moment, hey? <laughs> oh, no. Cannot. Here we go. Harry, do you know this song? <laughs> rat cat with you. Yeah, it's from 1992. Harry. Yeah. 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 By your side, everyone. Oh, don't go now. Don't go now. Don't go now. Don't go now. Very late. Rat cat. Anyway. From our original. Okay, we'll just get rat cat. Rat cat. Just the rat inside just the shopping center. Just have center. rat cat in the background. <laughs> um, my friend, uh, my friend who uh, was squirreling away a lot of money at the time. No, we're talking about rats, not squirrels. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, Anyway, he was um, uh, living in his wardrobe and there was bundles, and, and I'm talking thousands and thousands of dollars that he'd put away. And then uh, the day that he, I think he was saving up for something and saying by, by that stage and he went to go and get the money and the rats had been in the shoebox and they had chewed the money. There was just a little bit left and you need X like... amount of percentage of a note yeah, yeah. Yes. to be able to claim it back yes. and that percentage was gone was by gone. A, 70%. So all of his money got chewed up by rats, thousands <laughs> of dollars. Or at least a flatmate took it and made it look like the rest of the money <laughs> yeah, was just like yeah, and then they said, you <laughs> Nathan's rat. making it rain. <laughs> yeah. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. We are talking about rats inspired by the gigantic rat oh, that was spotted on, on. Uh, CCTV footage in the food court of a uh, shopping centre in Sydney. Just Ratting around. Having its way, Nat. It was a big monster. It could have its way with you if it yes. chose to. Yes. Gina's in Mount Pleasant. Hi, Gina. Hello. Hi, Hi Gina. Gina. Well, it's a simple question this morning. Rats, what have you got for us? Um, so I just thought I'd like to expose about how many rats I've caught in my life. They're quite hard to catch. Yeah. Um, but twice they've been in the hallway of my mum and specifically my sisters, which I like to tell about that one because I would just basically try and catch the rat and it was going super fast from room to room um, and it was all tiles that had socks on so I kind of slipped as I was running yeah. Yeah. and I just went all the way to the end of the hallway, hit the wall and I had the pot in my hand and I put it on top of the rat and I caught it and it was an amazing sight apparently. <laughs> yeah. so, so you so slid. Your, wait, your rat catching rat technique catcher. is to put a pot over the top of it. Yeah, or something. Or and then yeah. socks something as well to yeah. slide to yeah. get there quick. Or Tom Cruise and Risky Business. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And yes. is that so one I don't of, know how I do it. Yeah, and that's <laughs> in um, that's, that, that's in Gina's so. top five rat catching yes. stories. Gina, once, <laughs> once you've put the pot over the rat and it's trapped, then what do you do? Yeah. Um, well, it says like something like let's say cardboard or anything like that's kind of hard that doesn't bend. Yes. Just kind of put it underneath, underneath. it. Yeah. And then you lift it and then put it on. The, the pot is still on top, so yes. if the rat doesn't get to kind of escape. And then so, where do you put we, it? What uh, do you do with do it? Do you cook it? <laughs> uh, no, which I like to release them because I don't, I don't want to kill them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then they come back, back again. Level. That's so nice. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. <laughs> you, you take them outside, you spin them around three times. They, they, get, they, don't, they can't You're find sorry, their way David. back. Throw them over your neighbour's fence yeah, and away yeah, you go. Yeah. Thanks, Gina. Um, <laughs> Callum, hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, okay. Callum. Callum, rats, discuss. Uh, so I was working night shift in Fremantle and mm. standing near one of the pedestrian crossings at railway line. <laughs> yes. And heard a loud bang above me yeah. and there was half a rat sitting on top of the white warning light next to the crossing. Half a rat. Half a rat. Where was the other half of the rat? <laughs> no idea. It was nowhere around that we could find and it was just a front half just hanging 
off the top of a pole. God, can I, I just that's tell a warning you? To something. Can I just tell you right? Nothing would be more. I thought there would be nothing more terrifying than it being raining rats, but raining half, half rats. rats. <laughs> that's a, side, that's a like, really bad Was it side. the front half or the back half? It was the front half. So oh, so you can see the terror in its face. <laughs> that is interesting. Okay, so that I don't want to use warning. Warning. Yes. Or was it some sort of electrical off. thing? Oh, an electrical thing. Because it went thing. bang. Oh, so, oh, so yeah. half a rat. Half a rat. Falls down. Vaporised the other. God, if that no. fell on your windscreen, you had to use a windscreen wipers <laughs> no, to wipe that off. Oh. I mean, that would have been a, a bad ideal, day. Not ideal, Nathan. You would have been searching for a gull mm-hmm. pretty quickly. <laughs> um, <Big time. laughs> A seagull. <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Two interesting things happening in uh, the AFL. We'll start with the AFLW and Fremantle have lost their star forward, Gemma oh. Houghton, who's decided to go and join Port Adelaide. That stings. Oh, yeah, it does. No. Yeah, Trent Cooper, the coach, won't be uh, too wrapped with that one. Nope. But money talks and I imagine that she would be getting paid uh, a fair bit to go over Where's there Where's she and from? Play. She's West Aussie originally. Oh, okay, right. yeah, yeah. What is the highest paid female in the league? Okay, well, it's, it's an interesting thing, Nath, because what they do is they have the salary cap and they have it broken down into four tiers. So if you're a top tier player, you know, the top yep. players, they get paid um, a minimum of $37,500. Oh, you're... Hold on. Hold on. Plus, they are allowed to get paid for promotional work. Which is, uh, you know, it's up to the club whether they want to dish that up. So one player could get an extra twenty. Yeah. So, um, and then after that, um, they can get paid for working at a football club. So, for yes. example, um, you could get picked up by the West Coast Eagles and from Fremantle, and they could pay you a salary of one hundred and fifty grand to go over there and be a part of their club and pay yes. you ten games during the year. That's pretty bloody good, mate. Somebody like we're uh, talking ten games, a maximum of thirteen hours a week in the preseason. And ten hours a week of training during the real season. So you're saying women's footy is way easier. <laughs> At this point in time, one hundred percent. Hey, 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 Sean, don't, don't forget they're playing in forty <laughs> degree <laughs> heat. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> seasons change. Seasons change. Yeah. And the salary cap means yes. they get paid in salary because yes, they everyone salary. thinks that they're going to go home and cook a stew. No, <laughs> I think um, so. They've yeah. got a lot of hurdles to get over actually before they're treated the and same. And certainly those jobs at the clubs that you're talking about, <laughs> there's not that many of them. Do you know what I mean? Like, so oh, no, what no, you're no. talking about is the top tier. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of people not in the top tier who I, are also working. Working full time in other jobs, yes, as police officers and teachers and all sorts of things. Yeah, they're hard working girls. Well, in time, um, the AFLW will get mm. to a stage where everyone's Hello. getting a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. There's no question about yeah. that. But it's a, but, it's but a while that time will be moment. when a hundred thousand dollars doesn't buy anything. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, which, is, which is next week. <laughs> well, well, the thing is, the See, girls' everyone, competition at the political. moment with the way um, you know the teams have expanded, it's not that strong. So it's been diluted yeah, over yeah. the last couple of years. So you know, you got to take what you can get. And at this point. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. and you're only playing your ten games. So um, I hope in the future that they get paid an absolute truckload. People are going to the games and it's absolutely packed out. But that'll be a time, um, as it was for the AFL. It started two hundred years ago yeah. to the point it is today. Um, moving over to uh, Nathan Buckley and the story Ooh. surrounding him and Heredia Lumumba at the moment. Yeah, and this Getting has been ugly. a spat that's been going on for years and years. Yeah. And Heredia Lumumba played for the Collingwood Football Club. He originally played at Claremont before he headed over did that he? way. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. And he um, he said that there, uh, he had his time with um, at the Magpies. There was lots of racism and yeah. um, uh, slurs always getting said, mm. and people thought it was just joking. But he took it really offend. Yeah. He was offended yeah. by it, yeah. and he stepped out of the game after a while because he'd had enough. And um, he's been on a bit of a. Um, I, 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 people view the word crusade, but he wants to get it out there in the public domain yeah. Yeah. because it's not right. No. Yes. So he's released some um, audio mm. of him having a conversation with Nathan Buckley and Nathan Buckley basically telling him to, to, to be quiet or quiet down. Stop and being stop, rogue. Stop, yeah. Stop laying the boots into Eddie and stop being How rogue. How long ago was this recorded? 2014. Now, okay. Nathan Buckley was unaware of this being re- recorded, so apparently that's illegal in the first place. Mm-hmm. But Nathan has come out and said... Play the lot. Play the whole lot, and then people okay. can make up their mind. Right. So um, this has still got a f- fair bit of legs in it. It's getting mm-hmm. showed across the media uh, Australia-wide. Mm-hmm. No doubt it'll be making the papers again tomorrow. It'll be on the news tonight. But, um, yeah, there's a bit, fair bit of water to be under the bridge yep. between these two yes. can actually 
Oh, there's no reconciliation Re- there yeah, in, no. on the horizon yeah. at any time. I, certainly, I think that Heredia feels like he was not supported by the club at all and was made correct, to be correct, no? that he wasn't towing the team line and wasn't being a team player because he was calling people out for various uh, various things. And it wasn't just racism. He said there was a f- real culture of sexism there yeah. as well, that he, he called some of that out as well. And he just said that everybody, you know, accused him of going rogue and that he needed to pull his head in. And he's like, well... So you can perpetuate this behaviour. I can see where he's coming from. No, I agree. And this is what happened. People, this is what happens generally. People, the, the whistleblowers are the ones that get their heads knocked off, yep. and then but they're doing the work for future. And then generations. once it, once once it goes yeah. on public and stuff, people go, "Oh, I was behind them all the time." Yeah, it's like just but they couldn't see me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's, um, it's a difficult position. As you know, I'm, I'm part of the uh, Nathan's United Instagram. Um, community and um, Nathan Buckley has been uh, handed an infraction of this right, okay. pending an investigation. He may have to hand back his Nathan. Okay. Mm. Well, mm. Uh, at this point in time, he'd like to defend uh, that infraction. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Yeah. Pending about, investigations, yeah. Yeah. Sean, yeah. like yeah. the yeah. super cheap auto guy. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and that's come the full circle. So he's back on board. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see the way uh, that plays out and and more so that what Hereditia, uh, Hereditia wants from Nathan and the uh, all yes. the AFL. So let's make that clear. Yeah. What are you looking for? An apology, uh, I think financial he just wants compensation, an, an, or I don't think he wants financial. He's jobs. never mentioned financial compensation. Yeah, he? I'm not sure. No. I it don't. seems like he wants a change in the culture. Is what he wants, mm. but that that's tough to do. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. make it clear, then hopefully yeah. they can work towards uh, yeah. a better future. Your fingers crossed. The Nathan, Nat, and Sean podcast. Crew Nation is back, everybody, on ABC and ABC iView, uh, covering off the election campaign advertising. The host with the most is none other than Will Anderson, who joins us now from what appears to be a ski chalet. Good morning, Will. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I am in a ski chalet. No, I think it's more like where I'm writing my manifesto. It feels like a log cabin in the woods. Like I'm, yeah, no, I've gone right. Unabomber style and I'm about to just like really give you some thoughts about what I think about the world. Yes, two, let's get the blag out of the way. Two episodes of Gruen Nation. We decided yep. on a short campaign, a two-week campaign, not a six-week <laughs> campaign. So just a bit of a tip to the politicians out there. You can knock it over yeah. in a fortnight. And people yeah. like it more. Yes. Mm, oh, yeah. <laughs> Less is more. Yeah, yeah. So, well, let's get stuck into it. God, this election's boring, isn't it? <laughs> oh, hey, you know what? Can I, that, that, I've got to be honest with you. Like, thank God you've point. said it. Because I have done a lot of interviews this morning. You're like the 14th, 14th. or 15th interview I've done. And they've all been super engaged by it. They all have been so excited by the election, talking about the election, how well the election's going. You're the first person who's implied that it might be a bit boring. Oh, so, yeah. Just a bit of context, yeah. everyone. We had this chat just before we came on air and um, we said, what's the thing you've heard the most? And he goes, people keep saying, boy, this <laughs> <laughs> and, and you've got, so how many How many have you done now interviews and how many got to go? <laughs> yeah, so I think you're my 14th and I've got another eight up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can have 22, this is a boring election <laughs> in a row. Well, I want to do, do a quick, clean sweep of the entire interview. Well, you need to get back to us about that's the case. I'm looking at um, – because where you are now in your own home studio, obviously you're doing yes. all these um, interviews and you do a thousand podcasts and that. I'm looking at your whiteboards next to you. Blank. Not one idea on those whiteboards, Will. Yeah, he's run dry, hasn't <laughs> Have he? You? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know where the ideas are, though. You're in the Sean, show. This is the thing. Yeah. Buddy here, up here. Uh, You're looking at the wrong place. You shouldn't be looking at the whiteboard. You should be looking at this thing that this cap is covering up because that's where all the ideas are. (laughs) The ideas factory is open for business. The ideas factory is working so hard, ScoMo and Elbow have both visited the ideas factory, (laughs) got in a high-vis vest and pretended they work at the ideas factory. (laughs) (laughs) I I do say at the moment that um, uh, the Liberals have put out a campaign to counteract the uh, Labor's campaign where Scott Morrison keeps saying in it, um, it's not my job, mm. and they're saying oh, this can't. That campaign's a lie. It's like they're all lies. <laughs> Why like, yeah. isn't that like, hilarious? And they just singled this one out. I don't think they're telling the truth. <laughs> but also, what I love about that this is you'll absolutely adore this. So, like, it's very damaging for Scott Morrison because you can have an attack ad, but yes. the most damaging attack ads are when you can use the politicians' words yes. against themselves. Yep. So, yep. so obviously, that one when the the one thing we want of the leader of the country is to think that everything is their job, particularly. Yes. In a time of crisis, you want them to go, you know what, this isn't ordinarily my job, but you guys need me right now. I'm going to do it. And so there's three different versions of Scott Morrison saying, that's not my job. And I said to the meeting, I said, surely he hasn't said it 
three times. Like they've they've obviously manipulated that. They've tried to make it seem like it's new. Anyway, we did some research. They had 14 different examples <laughs> on the record of Scott Again? Morrison saying that's not that's my job. job. So they just they chose their best three. Now, surely, <laughs> if you're an advisor to Scott Morrison, after the first couple of times he drops in, that's not my job. Don't yes. you go up to him and go, stop saying it's not <laughs> your job. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, this is going to be dangerous. Yeah, That's going just forward. terrific. But well, yeah. one of the things that he seemed to think wasn't his job was looking after flood victims. Uh, mm. with not any, his job. Not his job and with no sort of real urgency. You mm. were a victim of those floods. How's it, how's it going? Well, here's what I will say. Mick Fanning was there well before the Prime Minister was. <laughs> I don't with the know jets, if you, With the jet skis zipping around the, the jet place. jet ski. Joel Parkinson and Mick Fanning like yeah. rescued people on their jet skis, which I absolutely loved. I'm voting for Mick Fanning in yes. the election is what yep. I'm saying. <laughs> I like, mean, the guy know, punched but, a shark. He's definitely up there. <laughs> exactly. I mean, like, yeah, one one follows the sharks and one punched the shark. Who <laughs> yes. are you going to choose exactly. in the election, right? <laughs> but my favourite thing about that Mick Fanning thing was the next day he was actually Ubering around like vets and doctors to yeah. get to work so like imagine that you're a world champion surfer couldn't be more famous person in the yeah. world and yeah. you just knew that in a time of national crisis you know what mick fanning didn't say that morning oh, that's, that's not, not my, my job yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. what an absolute yeah. hero but you're so lucky on that side of the country because oh, we don't really have big celebrities to help save us mm. in an emergency over here mm. we don't get chris hemsworth rocking yeah. up or anything no like we don't we'd have yeah. pete rosethorn we'd have pete rosethorn <laughs> we'd have maybe ben elton at a stretch he'd yeah, come and help yeah. us out yeah, yeah. we had oh, kate yeah. walsh for a while there did you hear how we had kate walsh she's still here she's back it's yeah, Kate Bash. Rove, Rove, Rove might be there. Still. Rove, yeah, Rove, yeah, but Rove, yeah, I mean, who's, 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 who's Rove going to carry to safety? It has to be a bloody kitten. That's no, all no, he'd be no, able Rove, to pick up. No, Rove, like, Rove, firstly, uh, the mums of Australia. Like, he's always cared about the mums of Australia. Well, yeah, always. He likes but, to greet them. We know that. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's true. He only is. It's only say hi to them. I guess he isn't really saying that, like anything. No more follow up after That's that. Right. But like, <laughs> I think Rove would be out there. I'd like. Like, was Sasha Baron Cohen was over there for yeah. a while? Well, he was. He's, he's long gone yeah. though. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, that, the place. When did Kate Walsh get back? Uh, I don't know, but she posted a picture of her with a cat the other day. Mm. Back oh, her. Mm. Kate Walsh. Mm. Have you heard how Kate Walsh is uh, part of our community now? No. I Private haven't. practices, well, Kate Walsh. Yeah, quick question. Mm. Do you know who Kate Walsh is? Kate Walsh. Mm, I mean, I was going to pretend I did. To Grey's Anatomy, Kate Walsh. Mm. Oh, Grey's Anatomy. Emily in Paris, yeah. Kate Walsh. Kate Walsh. Okay, keep naming shows I've never the umbrella, seen. The Umbrella, the umbrella Academy. Academy, Kate Walsh. Oh, yeah. yeah again, yeah, you're right that's behind good. We've got a real yeah. Ten reasons why, Kate Walsh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anything? Just one. <laughs> Give me one. <laughs> Well, anyway, she's back. So just, just put that in your she's calendar. She's amazing. Tell your friends. We love her. The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Hey, Will, tell us about algorithms when it comes to um, uh, advertising because I, yeah. I, I think I saw something on Twitter you put up that mm. they come for you straight away. They do. So basically in this election, you've got these big campaign messages and that's what we're going to kind of majorly look at on tonight's episode. But then you've got micro-targeting because what the yes. political parties can do now is they can say, okay, here's what we know about like Sean, right? Yeah. We know that at the moment he's been Googling tight white T-shirts and cool hats, <laughs> right? That's 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 basically what he's wearing so to work every day. Yeah, it's all red pill too, by the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the political parties know this and they go, you know what he'll be interested in? He'll be interested in outdoors stuff you'll be interested in stuff about going to the beach or maybe going fishing or being out on the weekends we're going to target our campaign specifically to him oh. around things that he is interested in yeah. if you've just had a kid and you've been googling baby clothes or childcare, suddenly you're going to get a whole bunch of messages that are specifically about child care and yeah. like i guess you know for you nathan it'd yeah. be <laughs> kate, kate walsh related <laughs> Here's <laughs> ten reasons why you should vote for Elbo. <laughs> they don't get they they pay Kate Walsh thirty dollars to do a cameo for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they send you a box set of grace. Yeah. yeah. I've just answered my phone. Kate Walsh is on the other hand. <laughs> She's amazing, mate. Don't you knock her into your dryer. Mm. She's brilliant. Mm. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I mean, obviously, I've missed the Walsh wave. <laughs> She's like, Jump, on Jump on the Walsh, Walsh wagon. wagon. <laughs> Hey, Will, what about... Pod- Become a Walshevik. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I will say? Mate? We're naming will- the place Walshington. <laughs> Hey, can I just say this, though? Yes. No, none of my other 14 interviews brought up Kate Walsh. And so this <laughs> Mate, is... Hello. You're out. welcome. You're Thank you welcome, so Will. Much. Thank you. Will. Oh, hey, Will, what about all your podcasting these oh. days? How did, yeah, how did, have how did, you wound up Willosophy for Good? Is that not coming back in at all? 
Have you seen the white board? Come on. <laughs> There's not an idea left there, Lee. Come on. Is it over? <laughs> Someone who thought they were not on the list to come? Is that what it is? Because Kate Walsh really wants to be on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing Walsh offices. I uh, know. What? Uh, it's on hiatus. I just okay. am so busy at the moment. I've yeah. just been on a big uh, national comedy tour and then ScoMo called the election at a time that wasn't particularly convenient to my schedule. Yeah, Did not right. run it by me at all. Didn't yeah, think about me rude. at all. Well, that's not his yeah. job. <laughs> that's not his yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, You're absolutely. right. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Ricky, stand-up went well, though. I've read some articles. Oh, yeah, Sean. Sean's been oh, Googling sure. you. Yeah, oh, hello. Yeah. Yeah, he reads read Playboy for the articles, too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, he was Googling Hillary Duff new photo <laughs> shoot. <laughs> the link to my reviews was right under it, so it was fine. I mean, there's a name for your next show, Willery Duff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's probably not up the Duff. That's how it's as long as it's. Nathan, Dad, and Sean. Amy Shark is headed our way for an extensive tour oh. of regional WA. This is her Cry Forever tour. But we got the chance to catch up with her yesterday. She's a joy. She's um, it was a little bit delayed, just a bit of context, because we'd heard there was a power outage. Yeah, and we're like, what? Don't uh, celebrities have all the power? <laughs> it made no sense. Heard you on Power went out this morning, Amy Shark. Well, I was actually I played tennis um, on Tuesday mornings, and the boom <laughs> yeah. gate they had the boom gate that I had to leave the place. Yeah, they had a power outage, so I was, oh, you, you were trapped. I, I, was, I was stuck in the car park. <laughs> my boom gate at my place goes down, or my, yeah, my, yeah. my gate, and I can't get out sometimes. Yeah, um, but yet I still have to come to work because of bloody Ubers. It's yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> Don't yeah. you think? I mean, this is our opinion. If there is any hurdle at all. For you to get to work, you shouldn't have to go to work. Don't you feel that way? I feel I feel like there's – I feel so bad because a lot of the time I'm always texting someone going, uh, and it sounds ridiculous. Like yeah, I'm made stuck up. at tennis. And yes. they're like, uh, is she? And I'm like, and I'm like, look, it'll prove it because I'll be racing in the house and I won't be able to like even look like Amy Shark. So this is <laughs> what you get. Well, I'm you, sorry. So you're home at the GC at the moment before you head over to WA? Yeah, yep. Yeah. We've, been, uh, we've been watching Snapper Rocks actually this morning. Mm. All the surfing going on. Are you far from the beach? Uh, no, no, I'm pretty close. I'm um, sort of close to more um, broad beach, mermaid waters. Yeah, um, wicked. But yeah, Burley, and that's not far. Yeah. So. Can mm. I tell you something, right? And this has just happened in recently, I feel like, and I've never made the connection before, and I can see it right now. You, if you wanted to go into acting, could play Kate Middleton. Are you oh. getting the Kate Middleton yes. from her? Yeah, you definitely. actually can. And Throwing when... <laughs> Kate Middleton Especially vibes lately. In your post tennis gear, you look, you know, when she goes all sporty yes. and starts competing, she's got a bit oh, of a competitive. Stop it, guys. Yeah, wow. I mean. Nathan, good call. Don't you think? Yeah. It sort of got me on your Instagram. The last few posts, you have been Middletoning up the upper storm. It's amazing. <laughs> Has anybody ever told you this before? I actually, ever since the Adore video came out, mm, yeah. Yeah, shot, um, and I didn't have my top knot in um, then. So, and then when I went to the States, they were, everyone was like, you look exactly like Kate Middleton. <laughs> and I was like, uh, look, I'll take it. I'll take yeah, it. I know. Right, I mean, it could right. be worse, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good get. Oh, well, if someone's going to so say good. that about you, that's funny. I know. That gets oh you up Oh, my God, bed. you should do it as a film clip. <gasps> you should. <laughs> Just, so, yeah, maybe that'll polo. get me the role. Yes, the role exactly. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, you made. Uh, hey, so you're two all right. So yes. we're pretty excited. Um, cause we're very I, um, I grew up in Kalgoorlie. And I grew up in Esperance. And you're covering oh. both of those places. No, and I've never been to either of those places. Like oh. I've been to. Well, you're going to be surprised. Before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, really? So yeah. What, what am I? What am, what's the hot tips? For those well, places? well, Esperance is beautiful. There's the there's what, like the one? most amazing beaches you will ever see. The squeaky sand beach. Yeah, yeah. Lucky Bay, kangaroos bounding down the beach. Water that is so clear and lucky, blue. Lucky and, Bay. Is yeah. that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. yeah Lucky yeah. Bay. Yeah. 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 yeah, Twilight Cove, where there's this rock there that you swim out to, and mm. then once you get there, usually sharks are circling, yeah. it, so you can't get back. <laughs> I mean, so that's amazing. Fun. It's a lot of sharks around, right. but you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've um, got that, good taste. But then you'll go to Kalgoorlie, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, Kalgoorlie um, still has the brothels there, which is fantastic. And I think that you and your um, and your crew should go and do one of the tours because it's yeah. absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get my resume in. Yep. So, <laughs> yes. well, I was wearing my mum met my dad. It was fantastic. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if, if if music it doesn't sort of go where I want it That's to go. Right. And then I you can can't get that gig contacts. as a Kate Middleton impersonator. <laughs> 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 Maybe I bring yeah. my act Exactly. There. That yeah. would be a niche. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the other sure. thing that you really need to get on um, Instagram while you're in Kalgoorlie, Amy, is the world's tallest bin, which is found at the end of Hannon Street. It's we hard have... to throw your rubbish in, but well, it is tall. Yeah. World's tallest bin. Wet. They, you, you you can't make this stuff up. I know. You know what I mean? Like how is that even a thing? Yeah. Oh, it, Like it's Ed's friends, thing. world's best beaches, Kalgoorlie, world's, world's tallest, tallest bin. bin. It's a thing. It's glorious. <laughs> it's the new I'm cover of it. your next album. So, so <laughs> I mean, I'm good. I was looking at all your days. So you're doing basically 60 uh, stops. Or oh, What happened here? Did someone hold you hostage? I said you're going to all these places? You know, it's actually got up to 65. Yeah, oh, right. Oh, so, um, and there was a moment where it was really exciting because it all came about, um, we were talking about Paul Kelly and yep. um, a lot of some of my um, team work for PK. So I was like, how can he keep, to, like he's all, I feel like this guy's always on tour. Hmm. And they're like, well, he can't everyone knows him so he can just keep going around to all these towns and, and and sell out venues and I was like well I mean there would have been a time where he would have gone and not everyone would have known him I'm like maybe my time is now maybe I need to go and start winning Australia over and um you know it, and what a cool thing to be able to do if if time prevails and, and yes. we sort of saw that gap in the calendar I've definitely pissed off a few people in Europe because I had to push back some stuff yeah and they're like but you've already done it. You've already done the tour. What are you doing? Like, you know, yeah. and um, so, yeah, so I, I just think what a cool way to sort of see your my country yeah. and play music and um, and the and I we really didn't expect any of the venues to, to, to do what they did. It was sort of just like, and then we just kept adding and adding. Are you serious? Uh, Amy, are you serious? Nothing happens in Esperance. Like they yeah. will be that excited that yeah. somebody is coming there. And the same for so places I started like thinking, Meriden. 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 I, I started Meriden. thinking like maybe they don't know me at all. Maybe it's just something to do. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. You could just yeah. put a random, yeah. random yeah. name up place. there and yeah. say that they're yeah. playing and it'll sell out. You like, are, put an impersonator there. Yeah. You are going yeah. to break Meriden when you yes. go to play to Meriden. So uh, the one thing that Meriden is for anyone that's driving from Kalgoorlie to Perth is you just stop there to go to Chicken Treat and Chicken Treat shut down. Yeah, so shut Meriden down. has that's been just gagging. Off. For okay. something to come there. Yes. I spoke um, the other day on air, Amy, about Meriden as a close connection to me because all the kids from Kalgoorlie that would um, have braces, the orthodontist wouldn't come as far as Kalgoorlie, so they would just go from Perth to Meriden. So then two days out of every um, three months or whatever, there would be um, every child in Meriden would have braces because <laughs> we were all getting our orthodontist. So people that didn't know what was happening would just be going, what is with all the dental issues here? Everyone has like these pristine teeth. Yes, it's right. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Getting yeah. something yeah. done about it. <laughs> like a little, the model town. Yeah. All our little lucky yeah. hands on yeah. their yeah. teeth. Uh-huh. A- a- apple sales plummet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you get to a well, you get to a situation where you need a break because you, you're just going yeah. day after day and you're whipping out these shows and then travelling as well. You're going to be knackered, mate. There'll be no tennis. There'll be no. You'll be yeah. Yeah. This would be ridiculous, dude, dude. I had like two years of a break, so oh. I feel like no no artist can complain anymore. We've just got to like you know we we. You, you can't bitch and moan that there's no music and then um, have an opportunity to go crazy and not take it. So um, oh, this is I, a brutal schedule though. Yeah. It's pretty brutal, but I, you know, I had 15 years where I used to play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I would play four hours um, at these gigs. And sometimes I'd, dub, I'd double down. I'd play um, an early slot and then go um, and play another till midnight. So, But you weren't driving me, 500 Ks in between them though. No, but I've got a, <laughs> I've got a team. So I literally have my clothes laid out. I, yeah, I know where yeah, I'm going. Right. I have food there. So if all I have to do is play like a really solid 70-minute set, I'm okay with that. I, I think that I can I can do that, and and I, I'm up for the challenge. Yeah, you know? I know I know it comes with the gig, but yeah, do you get to the point where you've sung uh, "I Adore You" a hundred million times over that you're like, yeah. how do, how do you then keep putting your body into it and well, selling it? The cool thing is, and and I would I thought the same, like you know, um, and and people ask me all the time, and and I hear other big artists say, you know, I'm sick of playing that song. And yeah, I'm not yeah, playing that song anymore. For me, I don't know, I've just like I tried so hard for so long to get to this level oh, where yeah. I can play to anybody that I'll never I don't think I'll ever feel like that. And yeah. also every venue and every crowd is so different. So I kinda 
I kind of get off on feeling the vibe of the room and being like, what song are these people into? Because it's so obvious what towns and what cities are into what songs. And, and I yeah, really, yeah. Yeah. And think I about the different that. walks of life as well. I mean, yeah. like, you know, so I play so, little, people don't even yeah. know. I got my own games I play on stage. Like I try yeah. and pick who's been dragged to the show. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like fun. a dad or like a boyfriend or someone who's yes. just been dragged there. It's just like. You know, and I try and find those people, and it's hilarious to me. It's so fun. I have my own. Get yeah, going. I have my own fun up there that no one even knows about. Who's <laughs> <laughs> being great. dragged to the yeah, show? Yeah, because it's often. You're right. It's often dads of young yeah. daughters, you yeah. know, who are twelve yeah. or thirteen well, well, who aren't we, old enough to go on their own. I just think about when we do an outside broadcast. So when we basically mm. go out of the studio and do the same thing, and we bring listeners along, we can pick the people that oh, don't yes. want to be there. <laughs> the the drag along is yeah. pretty obvious. Yeah. Yeah. They're there on their phones the whole yeah. morning. Yeah. They're not impressed by anything you say you as long yes. as you don't let it get to you mentally you can kind of have a little chuckle you yeah. know yeah. like That's to yourself <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. I suppose it's a challenge isn't it to try and get them to tap their feet or not their head yes. to your music game it's like yeah, yeah I got them yeah. I got them I've been doing it my whole life trying to win people over and trying to like you know get somewhere so I'm like I need to go I need to go and do it all over again in um, deep Australia you know? <laughs> deep oh, Australia. Australia. I tell you what though Amy it must be such an achievement within itself to be um, a staple in Australian music right now we remember when you first started Started, you know, and, yeah. and and now it's like Australian music is, you know, Amy Shark's a name that's yes. synonymous with that. That must be something great within itself, an achievement. It, it It is. Like, I mean, I always feel like I'm not quite there yet. You know, I look yeah. at, you know, I look at people like Paul Kelly and um, yep. Missy Higgins yeah. and, and I'm like, wow, they really are like um, such a household name. I don't know. Maybe I just, I still will have a, a small element of imposter syndrome my whole life, but um, I do <laughs> I do feel really lucky and, and it's a very hard market to crack because it's just inundated with music and artists right now. So I do, sometimes I do feel like I jumped on the last boat. They kind of like <laughs> um, <laughs> really, really broke um, an artist, you know, so I'm very grateful. Well, well now you've been there for a long time now in, in our minds and hearts. Amy, her name's, name's Amy. Amy. I'm Nat. Nat. I I'm Nat. Nat. <laughs> that's Close Amy. Enough. I'm Nat. Close enough. <laughs> Must have misspoke. Okay. That's very unusual. As you listen to this show. Wow, I've never happened before. Try it again. Try it again. Amy, you've been in this position for such a long time in our hearts and minds in Australia. But do you feel the pressure of putting stuff out and, and staying relevant? Is that a thing? Yeah, I mean, it's a real big thing on all artists' minds to stay relevant and, and you know, am I doing enough? Am I doing too much? Uh, is my songs going to resonate forever? It's yeah. like I always feel like i got a grim reaper on my shoulder being like, your time's <laughs> up. <laughs> um, but I just feel like, you know, I'm still loving writing songs. I've got so much to talk about and write about. So I just focus on that. Like I don't really I, – I do things that I'm comfortable – um, doing and um, I, I love being, I love working. I, I love always doing things and I'm open to new opportunities. And so I don't know, like I, I'm never going to force myself to do something that doesn't feel right. Sure. So as long as I'm doing stuff that feels right and authentic and I think that's the only way to get by and um, and be relevant without trying to be mm. relevant. Yeah, yeah, right. maybe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you mentioned before that everyone in Europe is a bit upset with you because you've pushed your European tour back. Which countries in Europe are you big in? Like where, where, where are well, they unexpectedly, you know, in Moldova or yeah, something? What's the story? I, I remember I had my first interview um, in Europe and this lady was like, you know, and, and this is my first time there. She was like, um, you know, Amy, um, are you excited? Because you are not famous at all here. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Like, what about Kelly like, They just, they just really hit you famous. hard with the truth. <laughs> yeah. Then they, they put um they put a door on a, I think it was like a perfume ad. Yeah. And we just saw ticket sales go crazy. Wow. Like, all through like Munich and um like all through Germany. Yeah. Yep. So, um, and Zurich in, in Switzerland. So, um yeah, it's really weird. What a but spin out. Canada, Canada and, and Europe for me are, are a good a good time. Mate, oh, I'm, wow. I'm still excited on your behalf that you're on the Shits Creek soundtrack. Yes. Um, that, that, that Shits Creek episode when there was in the bar, I was just like, that's a door. Yeah. No, I forgot because it's like it's so long in between when it actually happens. You get told yeah. about it oh, and you sign 
sign off on your song being on whatever. And I hadn't watched Shit's Creek and um, all I knew was the mum from Home Alone was in it. And I was yeah. like, cool. So, um, and then, and then randomly we started watching it and I totally forgot that that even happened um, because I was so behind in Shit's Creek. And then I, and I was like, oh my God, it's my song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool moment. That's awesome. really cool. Well, you know what? It's been such a great time spending some, spending some quality FaceTime with Kate Middleton yes, this morning. Yeah, Absolutely. No, we feel very um, blessed. My pleasure, darlings. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Future queen. Nice work. Um, you're a queen in our eyes, Amy Shark. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you, guys. I'm sorry I was late and I'm sorry I look like a, you know. Hey, Kate no, Middleton. Middleton. You look like Kate Middleton. Don't ever apologise. Fresh off the tennis court. I'll take that. I'll take that. Thanks, Bye, guys. Take care. Thanks, guys. Bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye. See you soon. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.